Hi there everybody, thank you for coming back for another video of my Johto Solo Run series. We're going to get started with the wheel randomizer in a minute, but first we're just going to go over the rules. So rule 1, we let the wheel decide. Spin 3 times, whatever 3 Pokemon come up, we choose one of them and do the full run with. Secondly, I can only use that Pokemon in battle for the entire run. Rule 3, I cannot heal using items in battle. I can heal outside of um, battle using items, that's fair game, but not inside battle. Rule 4, no held items. This means likes of no charcoal, no pink bow, nothing that can boost my moves or heal anything within battle. Rule 5, I can use TMs and HMs. Rule 6, I can't use double team unless it is um, learn via level up. Okay, now the rules are done, let's get on with the run. So last time we had a really good run. Next, this time I'm... I hope I kind of get a baby Pokemon. So first up we have Lantern. It's not a baby Pokemon. Has come up a few times so far, but... Eh, I'd rather do Chinchow than Lantern. What comes up next? Next is... Snubble. I really want to do a Snubble run. That could be a strong contender if we don't get a baby Pokemon. Okay, let's see what we get third. Come on, baby Pokemon. Magby, there we go. You ask and it delivers. Let's get started with the run with Magby. Quite happy that Magby's come up on the wheel, to be fair. Let's have a quick chat about it before we even get fully into the run. So, with like most baby Pokemon, they have a very fast growth rate. Um, its HP is 45, defense 37, which is bad. Special attack 70, 55 special defense, 83 speed and 75 attack, which is... So speed and attack and special attack are our best stats. Which is great because um, we're going to be trying to hit hard, we're going to be trying to um, hit things quickly. So it's actually quite a good, um, quite a good um, base stat distribution, I would say. The big problem is we only start off with Ember. Now, when we're against a Tortodile, that becomes a big problem because, um, as you can see, we lose this fight. So <laughs> it's a good thing it doesn't matter. But we don't actually learn another another move until level seven, where we get Leah. Now, Leah as well. Not really the best move for this early game. We want to be... <laughs> well, we lose against the Spearow as well. as two levels above us. And that's just the squishiness of Magby. So we're going to have to go and train a little bit more. And the best place for that is going to be Sprout Tower, where we can go against Bell Sprouts. We have Ember, so we can do quite a lot of damage against them. And get up the levels pretty, pretty easy. Level 8. Um, I reckon we're probably going to have to be level 9 before we go against that first Spearow trainer. But... I don't really want to get up to level 13 um, to do this first gym. At level 13 we get Smog, and then level 19 we get Fire Punch, Smog Screen at 25, Sunny Day, Flamethrower, Confuser, and Fire Blast. So we get a lot of good moves very early on in, le in levels. But not just um, with levels, we actually get a hell of a lot of good moves in um, the TMHM move pool. We get Thunder Punch, so we got a bit of coverage. Got Fire Punch as well, um, Mud Slap Psychic, which we could get in Kanto. And a level 11 was more than enough for us to get past Faulkner, so we can move on. We also learn Return, as most people do, Swagger. I think we've got a very good range of moves that we can use throughout the majority of this run. And I've talked enough about the moves and the stats. We're already up at um, Bugsy now. And Bugsy is not a problem whatsoever. I probably could have done this at a much lower level, and I still would have won. Fire is very, very good in the early game of, of um, Johto. And it's a good thing that we have um, Ember as well because the next port, next trainer up is going to be the rival and he has a Ghastly so usually in the early game you don't really get many physically attacking moves um, that can hit a ghost type so it's good that we've got Ember and it can take it down in two hits. We did turn uh, teach Mudslap as well for a bit of coverage, um, especially with that Croconaw because that Water Gun is going to do massive damage and I want to make sure it can't hit me. So once we've set up um, quite a lot of mud slaps, we're going to go for Ember and hopefully... There we go, that's the burn, that's what we wanted. The burn makes sure that its physical attacks don't do very much, but we didn't need it in the end. And now at level 19 we can learn Fire Punch. So we're going to get rid of Leah for that and move on to the Zubat. And this is just going to show how good Fire Punch is. One shot's that Zubat, I mean we are 5 levels above, but it's still really good. And honestly at this stage I was already getting a really good feeling about this run. It would have been great if we could learn a different type of fighting move for even more coverage, but the only other fighting moves we can learn are Detect and Dynamic Punch, and neither of them are ones that I really like using that much. 
Detect just kind of a delays the inevitable. We're not playing competitive, so we don't need to stall. And yeah, if we had a fighting type move, mil this mill tank probably would have gone down really, qu really quickly. But we have fire punch, we've got thunder punch, we've got mud slap, and we've got ember. So we're going to have to make do with what we've got. And I still think it is very doable at level 22. You might notice as well that my Magby is female, so it even opens us up later in the game to use an attract. Um, and on this attempt, we get really lucky. Rollout doesn't do very much, and we can take out the mill tank, so it's very possible to do it at level 22. Morty, usually I have quite a problem with Morty, but with Magby, it don't, it's not going to be too difficult. I mean, I might lose one attempt, I might lose like two or three attempts, but in hindsight, Magby is actually really, really good as a baby Pokemon. And I'm going to say this right now. Like, this is the, what, second baby Pokemon we've done on this um, playlist. We've done Tyrogue, who was absolutely awful. And But I think Magby actually might be the best Johto baby. But we'll have to see when we get through to all the other baby Pokemon. We've got likes of Smoocher, Maletkid, uh, Cleffa, Wrigley, both Pichu. We've got all of them to have a look at later, later down the line when they come up on the randomizer wheel. This attempt, we're at level 28 after that first Ghastly. Fire Punch is our main move and it's nearly one shot in the Haunter. It uses Curse to knock itself out, so we've actually got full HP going into the Gengar, which is good. So I'm not going to do what I've done in really hard runs where I've had to switch out to different Pokemon to get rid of Curse. Um, we are just going to completely balls to the wall. We're just going to go for it. Thankfully, that Haunter goes for Mean Look and we get through with half HP. So that's really, really promising. So now there's a few routes we can go now we've beaten Morty. We can go over to do the Rocket Hideout. We could go to Chuck, which we have gone and done. Um, and after Chuck, we can then go for Jasmine over in Olivine. I went for the... I went for Olivine, like the, the Chuck um, Jasmine route, because it is actually quicker to do. Um, if, you, if you do it right, it's actually the much quicker route to do. The big problem is he has a Polyrath and we're a fire type. So if we get hit by one Surf, we're done. Thankfully he goes for Dynamic Punch and it's still not enough for two Thunder Punches. So it's going to be a free hit KO, but that's a first try victory against Chuck where we do have a type disadvantage. And now we've beaten Chuck, we've now got Fly, which means everything is a lot quicker to get to. We can move back over to Jasmine because she's a Steel type and we're a fire type. We have the type advantage. I could have set up Sunny Day to make sure our fire moves do a lot more, but I didn't even think I needed it. We did um, against the Steelix, and we do take a lot of damage, but Fire Punch one-shots the Steelix now that Sunny Day is up, and we know we outspeed the Magnemites, and this becomes one of the easiest wins I've had against Jasmine in this run in this series so far. And honest, the, t the, the only other Pokemon that has done this well to this point has been Sneasel. Sneasel was a fantastic Pokemon. I really, really enjoyed my run doing it. And so far, I am really enjoy enjoying doing this Magby run. Moving over to the Rocket Hideout. We are just... It really annoys me how annoying this little side quest is. And the fact you can't skip it to then go through to the rest of the game. I mean, yeah, you can do it for a little bit of XP farming, but... The Pokemon is so weak, it's not a challenge, and that's that's why I, I really don't like this section, because it's just not a challenge. You breeze through it, and that's it. It's just it's just a time waste, really. I don't, I, I don't actually enjoy this part of Johto completely. But we have committed to doing the full um, Pokedex of Johto in their solo run in their own region. So we're going to be doing this at least about 100 times in talks, there's about 100 Pokemon in Gen 2 that are new. So moving over to Price, he has two Water Ice Pokemon, which is why we keep Thunder Punch. It is a great coverage move for Magby, and it mean it means this 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 is not going to be a problem whatsoever. This fight, we'd have now got Flamethrow instead of Fire Punch, much more powerful move, and it one shots the Pile Swine. So yeah, even with mediocre stats, we are doing fantastic. We are pretty much one shot in most things, one or two shot in. And we can just keep blasting through the entire game with such ease. And now we've beaten Price, that opens up the um, the end of the Rocket Hideout quest. And when we do that, we have to go against the rival in the underground. 
So he always starts off with his gold bat in this fight. And honestly, flamethrower is going to be more than enough in two shots. We do get confused though, which is annoying. So we, instead we go for Thunder Punch just to finish him off. And we're now level 43 and we can learn Confuse Ray. Now this was a tough decision to make. Do I get rid of Headbutt for Confuse Ray? But because I feel like Confuse Ray is going to be much more useful later on, I, I bit the bullet and I went for I went for Confuse Ray. We still have coverage in Fire and Electric, but if we come against any Pokemon that can resist both, we are in a little bit of a pickle. We've got three Pokemon left in this fight. The sun is still up, so Flamethrower is going to do massive damage. And we can pretty much ease our way through all of these last three Pokemon. Sneasel is very weak to us. Magnemite also weak to fire. Easy battle in the end. We are down at 40, 35 HP, but even that, it's still an easy battle. I, I wasn't worried whatsoever in this fight. And that leaves us um, off to the Rocket Executive at the top. So he's got a Houndour, a Coffin, and a Houndoom. I mean, we're not super effective against any, but Thunder Bunch is going to pretty much cave its way through all of them. Flamethrower is going to be the best against the Coffin, because it's a more powerful move. When it comes back to the Houndoom, again, we're going to go for Thunder Punch. What I've been liking about these runs so far is every single run has been different. And I have to develop my strategies as I go. Annoyingly in this attempt, we do get beaten by the Houndoom. And that was just bad strategy on my part. I should have just went balls to the walls, um, thunder punching. So that's what we're going to do this time. Level 46 at this point. We do level up very quickly as a baby Pokemon. Um, it does tail off towards the back end of the game. You, you kind of level up quickly and then it plateaus and comes a bit slower but we're level 47 doing this before we've even got to Claire I mean average um, level that I've had to be to even beat Claire in most of these runs has been around about that 50 mark so this is expected I would say every <laughs> the most annoying thing that I do lose time for on this run is every single level Magby wants to evolve and you are losing at least around about 5 seconds doing that every single level, so yeah. You can probably, if someone wants to work that out for me, feel free to let me know. So now we've got the last gym leader and that is Claire. We actually don't have any moves that are super effective against her. But the best thing that's going to happen for us is we can get um, confuse it, we can get sunny day set up, and then sweep with flamethrower. When it's only days up, it boosts the fire type moves. And um, we could learn Fire Blast here, but because it doesn't have much PP and because it doesn't have as good accuracy, it's better to keep Flamethrower, in my opinion. Even though Kingdra is resist, well, it doesn't. It's neutral to Electric type attacks because of the Dragon typing. The most annoying thing is that I am paralyzed because of that first Dragonair. We do take down the Kingdra, but that leaves us with two Dragonairs left, and they do have Dragon Rage. Oh no, Dragon Breath, sorry. And because we're paralyzed, we can't outspeed, and it's going to be a very tight battle. Hopefully what we're, we're hoping for is that it hits itself in Confusion. We can tank one more, one more attack here to set up the Confusion. We're on 4 HP and we're fully paralyzed, so yeah, this is going to be a reset. Annoying, but... I, I've the thing I've found about this battle with Claire is if you get paralyzed you might as well learn reset anyway so trying to put the odds in my favor a bit more I went up to level 53 we haven't been paralyzed we've set up the Sun and we've taken out with confusion so we've got round to the Kingdra without losing anything so what we want now is to confuse the Kingdra it wants to hit itself with confusion perfect and then we want a thunder punch we actually get the paralysis here as well, so they've now got two things that can stop them hitting. And please hit yourself in confusion. There we go. Every hit so far has, has taken down the Pokemon from confusion. Again, we set up a confuse ray. This is why I kept it. Annoyingly, we do get um, paralyzed here, but we have got a lot more HP to work with. We set up Sunny Day. It's not confused anymore, but Flamethrower is going to be more than enough to take it out with a critical hit. Last up is the final Dragonair. It misses Slam. Flamethrower hits. And it still doesn't take it out. Okay, so two flamethrowers take it out and we beat Claire. So it wasn't that much of a problem. 
took us a few tries but nothing too bad. So last up is the final time we will see the rival today. And the rival today is Ben, um, he is going to be setting up his channel in the next coming months. Probably under the alias of Wacko Goldfish, so is from now on his name probably will change to Wacko. <laughs> um, one of the best things about having Sunny Day, especially when we come up against Feraligator, it weakens all water moves, so super effective moves against us are now not going to do any near as much. And we can, pr we can quite comfortably sweep through. We aren't paralysed, so we can outspeed most things. Even the Kadabra, which is a very speedy Pokemon, we still outspeed and one shot with Flamethrower. Get level 57, our stats are now in the hundreds of some of them. And Magneton goes down with one last hit. And that just now leaves the Elite Four. And the Elite Four is going to be a bit of a gauntlet, it depends what sort of luck we're going to get, but I feel like I've got a good enough move set and good enough stats that I could make quite quick work of most of them. We've, we're always going to start off pretty much with Confuse Ray. These Zatu are weak to electric type attacks, so once I've set up a sunny day, because I'm thinking about the, the next Pokemon coming up, with Sun Up it's going to be more powerful to use Flamethrower. The Slow Bro is what we need the Thunder Punch for. And because it's now paralysed, it goes for Amnesia, Thunder Punch takes it down. We're looking pretty good right now, three Pokemon left. So we're going to go for Flamethrower against the Zatu. It is a one-shot KO with the Sun Up. Sun up. Executor, it'll be, <laughs> even if the Sun Fades, it's going to be a one-shot. We are looking very good for this. And last up is Jinx. As long as we outspeed, we win. We win. <laughs> and there we go, there's Will. First time we've beaten Will in the Elite Four. But I'm actually kind of worried for... For Bruno, we are defensively very weak, and he is offensively all right. Um, <laughs> trainer, I wouldn't say the best because of Confuse Ray. We actually make sure the Hitmon Top doesn't hit us with Dig. We have to use Flamethrower against the Onyx, but it takes it out in one with the Sun Up. Matcham, do we outspeed? We do outspeed, and with the Sun Up, it is nearly a one shot, but Rock Slide does big damage. And he uses a max portion. The sun's probably going to go down after this turn. Yep, there we go. So now Flamethrower's not going to do anywhere near as much. And Rock Slide takes us out. That's what I was worried about. The scariest Pokemon on Bruno's team is always that Machamp. So we need to make sure that sun stays up so that we can actually one-shot these Pokemon. Hitmontop pretty much always goes for Dig first time. And when it hits, it does about a third damage, which isn't great. Um, the Onyx, now we've got Sun Up, is going to be a one shot. It's not the not the greatest Pokemon. I don't know why they haven't put him with Steelix for this. Machamp comes out. And it was a range. That's interesting. Okay, so now the Sun's gone. One shot in the Hitmon Lee, still very powerful. Hitmon Chan comes out with one Pokemon left. Mac Punch does decent damage. But as long as we hit him now, we win. There we go, and that is Bruno done. I didn't think that I would beat Will, but not beat Bruno first time, but yeah. And you may have noticed here that I've actually skipped Koga. And yeah, the truth is I lost the footage. But pretty much, I'm a fire Pokemon. Most of Pokemon are weak to fire um, or electric. It was a one-shot victory. I actually didn't lose any HP. The Crobat actually set up um, double team and I thunder punched it in one with a critical hit. So I'm sorry I lost that footage, but we've moved on to Karen, and as you can see here, Magby is not having any problems whatsoever so far. Sunlight has faded. Murkrow is a good Pokemon to set it back up on because it doesn't do much damage, and Flamethrower now one shots it. The big problem though is Houndoom. It's a fire type Pokemon, so Crunch is always going to do big damage, but yeah. The next, and then she uses Mac Proportion. And we miss, so we actually get some really bad luck here. So I don't know how, I actually um, did this a few times and lost a few times, so I actually was struggling on how to figure out how to get past her. We're level 59 at this point, we haven't even reached level 60 like most of our runs have so far. So, yeah, we get past the Umbreon without losing any HP. Gengar, we're going to try and confuse it this time, because I want to set up the Sun here instead of on... The Murkrow. And thankfully the Gengar complies. 
We can then take him out with Flamethrower, and if I'm right, we should hit. We should be using enough moves so that Sun will go down by the time we've beaten Murkrow. So if I'm right, it'll go down now, or at least after the first attack on Houndoom. The Sunlight's still strong, we confuse it. It uses Crunch, oh that's not good. Special Defense drops as well. And Thunder Punch is not doing very much, but we get the Confuse hit. Sunlight fades. And please hit yourself with Confusion. Yes it does, so we're on to the Vile Plume. And if we hit it with um, Flamethrower, that's the match. Come on. And we win. So, in hindsight, not too bad. I'm worried about Lance, though. Lance starts off with a Gyarados who likes to set up Rain Dance on the first turn. And more than likely, I think I'm going to be outspeeding it. So, do I just go for Thunder Punch or do I try and set up Sunny Day? I try for Thunder Punch on the first attempt and it doesn't matter. We hit it super effective. One shot. Perfect. Exactly what we need. Aerodactyl's out next and it is weak to Thunder. So it's going to be a two shot hit and we get hit by Rock Slide which is not good, that's a lot of damage. We're going to have to try and get past three Dragonite and Charizard with 65 HP. So if we've got to hope Confuse works on our side but it doesn't and Hyper Beam kills us. So yeah, we need to think about something different here. And... The strategy was more luck than anything, if I'm being honest. We did have to go up to level 68. I tried at each level against Lance going up. 68 became the one that was actually possible to do it at. So I'm not happy that I had to go up to level 68, considering how well Magby was doing. But this is why we pick up Rare Candies on the way, so we can save a bit of time. We also did go back and pick up Hidden Power Ice, it was. So there's another coverage move that was better than Confuse Ray. And we pretty much sweep. Hidden Power Ice is ridiculously overpowered. Especially when it comes to Lance. The Charizard is going to be weak to Thunder Punch, so we go with that. And it's nearly a one-shot kill. We're 22 levels above it and it still doesn't take it out in one, which is... This is where the drop-off in Baby Pokemon's power really comes from. Yes, we can do a lot of damage to a level 50 Dragonite, but we're still 18 levels above it, and it takes two shots. So when you get into the late game, baby Pokemon really don't do well. They're too squishy, they don't do enough damage, so... Yeah, this late game, this post game, with Kanto is going to be really difficult. I don't know how red's going to go. I think blue should be still quite relatively easy. But that's not the question I need to ask right now. The question I need to ask right now is what time did we beat the Elite Four in? Let's have a look. So we were level 68 and we did it in 4 hours and 16 in-game minutes which is very very quick and that's a baby Pokemon. Sneasel was not too far off this. So a baby Pokemon getting to this is ridiculously good and like I said earlier this might be the best baby Pokemon in the generation. But that's um, not the end of the video. We actually have still quite a bit of footage to do, and that is because we need to go and do Kanto. So what we're going to go and do, we're going to speed through these um, credits here. And we're going to have to think about what we need to do for blue. The majority of the Kanto gym leaders are so easy, but apart from blue and red, there's no challenge in the post game. So let's have a look see what we do with blue. He's going to start with his Pidgeot, which means we've still got one coverage move that can do a lot of damage against him. Through all of the battling, we are now level 74. We've got Hidden Power Ice, which is going to do big damage. Two Hidden Power Ice is going to take it out. We don't have any setup moves um, to try and increase our stats, so we do have to just go for it. Hidden Power Ice, I've kept that for the ride on. And Earthquake does massive damage. Like so much that it takes us out and we are 18 levels above it. So what are we going to have to do differently here? Well, there's, I guess, one strategy which you've seen me do before. We are going to use the attract strategy. <laughs> it's why I hinted earlier in the video that we are a female Pokemon, because when it comes to solo running, female Pokemon using the attract strategy is very overpowered. Seeing that straight away, it doesn't hit us, and we can get a free hit on, on hidden power. 
it's still in love with us, and it hits a sandstorm, which isn't the greatest thing. That takes off an 8th of your HP every turn, but it also takes off an 8th of theirs, so it will in turn also help us out with trying to take them out. And it won't, it'll subside after a little while. I think it's an 8th or a 16th of your HP. I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to double check. And we're already through to the Alakazam with a decent amount of HP. As long as we outspeed, I think we win this one. So we're going to go for Flamethrower. And it's a one shot, so that's good. That's very good. Next up is Arcanine. Sandstorm's still going and we're losing HP quite rapidly. I don't have a 100% move that's going to work here. So I'm going to have to go for Thunder Punch. Attract is going to keep him at bay for a little bit and we just got to hope that he doesn't hit us. Full Restores do not affect the Attract um, condition as well. So that means that we can... Um, he can heal all he wants. If he's still attracted, um, it just means we, we're we going to have more chances to hit him. Ideally, I want us to crit so we don't actually... It keeps being infatuated. One more hit. Come on, one more infatuation. Get in. We beat the Arcanine. That was the scariest Pokemon on this on this team. And last up is Executor. Most times it's going to go for Solar Beam. One Flame Throw should be more than enough. And that's the game. We are on to red with just a Magby. Actually, I enjoy these solar runs in Johto. I think I do prefer Gen 1 more, but these solar runs in Johto are a new challenge. You don't have the badge boost glitch. Um, yeah, it does take you a little longer to get through Johto than it does Kanto. Considering I've been able to do a run in, in Kanto where it was under 3 hours game time. Yeah, it's... Um, it's interesting to say the least. So we're into red now. We've got past the Pikachu and the Espeon. And then Blastoise comes out. We are going with the Attract Strap. But he does hit with Surf. And it's a... We... Wow. <laughs> wow. We hang on with 15 HP. And we hit the Swagger. We've got rid of Hidden Power Ice. Thunder Punch does not take him out. He's got now three things on him. And he still manages to hit a Surf. He had Confusion, he had Paralysis, he had Attract. And he still managed to get through all three of them to hit us with a Surf. That's an annoying Blastoise. So we had to level up to make this a bit more consistent. Level 85, and we've just one-shotted the Pikachu. We use Attract on the Espeon, and it doesn't attack us. So we can go back into using Flamethrower. We can take two Flamethrowers, even at level 85. But he goes for a Reflect. So we're back through to the Blastoise. Let's see how we do this this time. We go for Attract. Definitely more broken than using Confusion or um, Paralysis. Uh, he's still in love with us. That's good. We've got Swagger and Attract on him now. Can we get a Paralysis again? We do. We get a Paralysis again. He hits himself with Confusion. Perfect. We're going to win past the Blastoise. Next up, he's probably going to send out the Snorlax. And I don't have a great physical move for him. So again, we're going to go with Attract. We're going to go with Swagger. Oh no, you know. Flamethrower's not doing very much at all. This isn't good. Oh. Please just don't attack us. Can we get the, the, can we get the Paralysis? I don't want to give him Swagger. Because if he hits me with one Body Slam. That's me done. My defences are that bad. Please don't use Rest. Please don't use rest. How many times has he been infatuated with us? This is crazy. This is how broken Attract is. <laughs> and we beat the Snorlax. We've still got full HP. Okay, we're going to Thunder Punch that Charizard. It's going to take two hits. And he's paralyzed. Please be... Ah, he hits Wing Attack. Okay, fair enough. So Thunder Punch is going to take out the Charizard. And that just leaves the Venusaur. Sunny Day has not been set up, so he can't, he'll have to use two turns to use Solar Beam, which he always does. Flamethrower is going to do 100% damage. Get in. That's Magby done. Magby has beaten the Elite Four, Red and Blue, honestly, very, very easily. Not many tries to um, actually redo anything. And yeah, I want to see what time we've now completed Red in. So, yeah, now the credits are rolling. Let's have a look. So, this is the move set and the stats that we had for Magby. Level 85, Flamethrower, Attract, Thunder Punch, and Swagger. 
And there are our stats. We didn't even reach 200 on any of them. What was our um, final time? 5 hours 26, 27 in-game minutes. That's really quick. Not Sneasel quick, but that is our second quickest Pokemon. That's amazing. Right, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, share, you know, all that, um, all that stuff. And we'll see you next time. Take care.